As a hospital pharmacist, one of the most important tasks is to perform a medication reconciliation, also referred to as MedRec in the healthcare field. So what is medication reconciliation? Why is it so important? So medication reconciliation process of reviewing and verifying a patient's complete medication list to ensure there's no errors, that everything is accurate. As a hospital pharmacist, medrecs are typically performed multiple times for a single patient. By carefully reconciling medications during transitions of care, such as when a patient gets admitted to the hospital or when they're discharging or even when they're transferring in between wards, healthcare professionals like pharmacists can identify discrepancies, ensure that the correct medications are continued when they're supposed to be continued, and ultimately protecting patients from preventable harm. So as a hospital pharmacist, there are many points where we do medication reconciliation. So when a patient first comes to the hospital in the ER, um, at my hospital, they are interviewed by the ER pharmacist if they are going to be admitted. So that's the first medication intake interview that we have, and it's really important that we're thorough as possible. So not only collecting information on what prescription medications they're taking, how they're taking it, OTC, supplements, everything as well. So as a hospital pharmacist who has interviewed countless, countless patients in the ER and just in the hospital when they first get admitted and at discharge, I wanted to create a template that would help future pharmacy students, future pharmacists, or even other healthcare workers like nurses and doctors who need to do thorough medication intake interviews. Um, I thought this would be really helpful. I created this little Etsy template for you to use has little props and reminders on there of things to ask for and clarify. There's two different types of templates, one that fits everything into a full page and one where everything is extended to two page if there's a lot of medications to log. And I hope it's helpful. So during this time, this interview, it's very important to ask open-ended questions. You wanna hear how the patient's taking it. Um, so oftentimes, patients could be taking it differently than what's instructed. I wouldn't just read off of their prescription and ask them yes or no questions because oftentimes, patients will just be quick to say, yes, yeah, yeah, that's how I take it. Prompt them, oh, how many tablets are you taking a day? Um, then you'll kind of unravel discrepancies or sometimes um, a provider could have made adjustments to the prescription but forgot to update the prescription themselves. And oftentimes when the patient gets admitted to the hospital, um, the doctors will just renew everything that's on their medication list. So this is where as pharmacists we can catch these errors, discrepancies, and intervene. And oftentimes, after a patient gets admitted to ER, as pharmacists, we do an initial uh, evaluation of them when they first get admitted, and we assess all the orders. So this is the medication reconciliation part. So how the way I assess patients when they first come into the hospital and get admitted, uh, there's three things. What is newly started? So you know, fluids, antibiotics, uh, PRN medications, things like that. You know, are they appropriate? Um, are they dosed correctly, indication, things like that. And then I checked what's been changed or adjusted. Is the medication renally or hepatically adjusted? Has their weight changed and need to be dose adjusted based off their new weight? Is their blood pressure dipping and maybe would be in their best interest to lower their blood pressure medications? And then lastly, I check what home medications were held and is it appropriate? But sometimes things could get missed and let's say the doctors held a whole medication that you know there's really no reason to be held and it might be in their best interest to restart those whole medications while they're in the hospital. Um, a common one that I mentioned before is inhalers for their COPD or asthma. Those would be important to resume while they're in the hospital. Another point of medication reconciliation in time is when a patient transfers between wards. So sometimes patients will get admitted, but they'll switch beds to a different ward, or let's say they downgrade from ICU down to the medicine floors, or they um, upgrade to DOU or things like that. So during those transfers, the orders tend to fall off and the doctors have to put in new orders for the new ward because um, all the orders has to align with whatever area the patient's in. So this is where we could cross compare, you know, what has been uh, continued, what did they forget to order, what was stopped, 
and that's where we are able to catch a lot of discrepancies and intervene as well. And then last line of medication reconciliation is when they get discharged. So during their stay at the hospital, we compare, you know, with the medication list that they initially were on when they first got admitted and what they are on currently in the hospital and we you know check with the doctors so during his hospital stay you guys renewed continued his amlodipine while he's been here um, you guys have been holding his metformin and have been doing insulin sliding scales just want to double check are you going to have him continue the metformin when he gets home things like that so some common interventions that we have as pharmacists is that Let's say a patient just went through a surgery, they just had a procedure, the doctors have been holding the patient's blood thinner, aspirin, and when they get discharged, you know, something that could be easily missed is that the doctors don't clarify when it's appropriate to restart those, or they have, they said, okay, at discharge, patients can restart all their home meds, everything's fine. So for us, as pharmacists, we'll clarify, oh, you know, for his blood thinner, since he just had a procedure, did you want him or her to start right away or do you want to wait a couple days? Just to clarify, just because blood thinners and surgery, oftentimes they would have patients hold it for about three or four days, depending on the doctor or X amount of days. 